Hello everyone. Welcome to Cubism. I'm Aaron. I'm Drew. It's been a while since we've done, uh, I guess, this format. You know, I've been tinkering around with gameplay for a bit. So, you know, kind of feels nice to kind of go back to what you're used to. <laughs> On a semi-regular schedule. Almost regular, you know, something like that. So, we have Thrones of Eldraine coming out. Uh, Pre-release is uh, one week from now, so we're recording it just uh, the Sunday before. And, well, wow, let me tell you, like, I'm uh, how impressed I am with this set. How, how I guess, how... How unexcited I was for the first couple of days of spoilers, and then how they kind of you know wrapped up pretty uh, like, almost every day. Every day just got better and better yeah, and better. Pretty aggressively. Like when they first yeah. started, I was like, "Oh no, this is like a Lorwyn with so much flavor that there's nothing playable." And I don't know. Great. Yeah, I think this is the first set maybe in a long time that I that I uh, you know I, I noticed that I think Wizards did a great job of spoiling the set. You know, I think maybe they front load the sets or the spoilers a little too often, so it feels like you know you get. You know, excited about it way too early. So by the time the set actually comes out, you don't really care anymore. But you know, they they teased you enough with uh, with uh, Oko and Garrick that was spoiled extremely early on, as well as the uh, now like fairly infamous uh, adventure mechanic. And it was enough to kind of you know get you in, get you uh, get you invested. Well, they didn't even tell you what food did. Yeah, they didn't, right? do, so... didn't tell you a lot of things. But um, it was enough to get you you know get you invested. And then for you know as time went on. Even even though the the third planeswalker was 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 leaked pretty early on, the um, the strength of the set in just the mechanics in adventure in like the food interactions and stuff like that, and then like the, the these big over the top commander cards were you know scale like, again every day just got better and better and better. That I think it was a successful spoiler season just because the set wasn't just all in the planeswalkers; it was around the flavor, uh, around uh, the mechanics, around everything about it, and and it all, and all the cards are kind of good. Like I think it's really easy. To have made adamants or sorry, not adamants, but uh, adventures like bad. Like I think if you took this set and made it two sets or three sets, like you, you would have in the old format of designing magic sets, this set would be would probably be terrible. Yeah, you get all the simple, like easy adventures, and then you get the yeah like, mythic-y, flashy ones in the later sets. Yeah, and like you know all the all the puns and references and that throughout the sets. You know, you can only have so many of them I can imagine. So there's just enough adventure cards that they're all they all feel strong enough. There's enough. There's a the night synergy is strong enough in one set. Uh, the food. Uh, interactions and payoffs seem like there's, there's just enough in in this one self-contained set that it wasn't diluted and kind of ruined by I think you know making it multiple sets. So yeah, very very excited for Throne. <laughs> the, the mechanics for the set um, weren't also weren't also very inspiring when they first uh, I guess first announced them. But before we get into that, we want to make sure we thank our uh, channel sponsor, show sponsor, sponsor sponsor. Um, the Matabase, your home base for all things Magic the Gathering. It's uh, where we've been hosting, you know, the these shows kind of regularly. I've been, re we've been releasing uh, gameplay content there. Uh, and yeah, as we, you know, all of our stuff appears there first. Then you know, either on Reddit, it's YouTube channel, uh, uh, I guess same time. But like all goes to the Matabase. So anyway, so the mechanics in the sets. So the first one we got is food. Food was a uh, unknown became um, a artifact token. That is pay two mana, tap it, sacrifice, gain three life. Things have uh, payoffs for having it, either you're sacrificing the food to gain life or sacrificing the food for some some other cause. Or you trade it. Or trade food or turning things into food. It's all very flavorful. Uh, then we got the adventure spells. Spells, creatures, you know. So the adventure cards will have a spell on one side and the creature on the other. And you can choose to play just the creature or you can choose to play the spell um, that will exile itself. And then you can play the creature assuming that spell resolves. So, the those are that being pretty good, and then we got uh, with adamant, kind of uh, uh th th for things that uh, uh, was it? What's the? It's like a devotion type. Yeah, mechanic, I was gonna say, yeah. what's the signs of things to come? Going back to yeah, Theros, it's a signal. Yeah, that there. There's a lot of devotion in the set. There's a lot of triple color mana costs. There's a lot of adamant abilities. So adamant gives you a benefit for for um, paying multiple of one color four, I believe. Uh, multiple of one color. I think it's three. Three, yeah, three. Although one color into into spell gives you a bonus or makes the spell more powerful. But um, yeah, then I guess we got yeah. The last thing we got is not really about mechanic. Is is it is a uh, just knights. So there's uh, a lot of knight synergy, obviously, in this uh, Camelot esque storyline. Yeah, it was the big warning when it started being spoiled. Like there's knights and these knights trigger off other knights. Yeah. And there's equipment with knights. Oh no. Yeah, normally, like, the tribal sets don't really translate very well for cubes, so it was definitely like a, oh no, like, we can have, maybe if, you know, tribal gingerbread men, or, or, or gingerbread, uh, anyway. 
So yeah, the mechanics. So mechanics ended up. Uh, thankfully, adventure ended up being really good. I know there was a lot of speculation like, oh, well, can you like cast a spell half when the creatures in play? But anyway, what we ended up getting ended up being better than I think what most people thought it was going to be. So anyway, enough. Uh, enough kind of. I don't know. Filled space. Whatever you call it. Uh, the first half of this episode, like this first half of the review, we're going to talk about the adventure spells. So this uh, this episode is going to be it's going to be just adventure cards. So if you want, you know, the, the rest of the set, maybe some food stuff here and there, you know, uh, look for the part two of this. But uh, part one, adventures only. <laughs> so going on a journey. Going on a journey. So the first card we're starting with uh, is starting on strong. Start on strong is a uh, bone crusher giant. So bone crusher giant is two in red for a four three giant. Whenever Bone Crusher Giant becomes the target of spell, uh, becomes the target of spell, Bone Crusher Giant deals two damage to that spell's controller. And his adventure spell is Stomp for one and a red instant. Damage can't be prevented this turn. Stomp deals two damage to any target. See, I knew what this card did, but I didn't know it was called Stomp. I, I think a lot of people just like don't think of, they'll look at the actual the spell's name; they just look at the creature's name. Yeah, because that'll always be what you refer to it anyway. But Bone Crusher Giant. It gives you, I guess, a three drop. I want to say that red needed. Sorry, red. Ne- I want to say some sort of reference it's, that red needs three drops, it, which like, is untrue it nowadays. Needs diversity in its three drops. They have a, they have infinity gravel master effects, but bone crusher giant is just a fairly efficient uh, standard creature. Uh, four three for three, with this ability. So if it you know if it gets removed, they're going to take two damage from it. But uh, stomp to make this card more interesting is the shock that has I guess a uh, skull crack yep. ability attached to it. Yeah. No. Well, yeah. But you together, always, yeah, you always draw a four three, right? So yeah, so it's, it's, it's a scry or something. Two mana, like two mana shock that draws you a four three, or just a four three on curve whenever you need it. But I think uh, Bone Crusher Giant fits into the, I guess the camp that uh, where the spell is cheaper than the creature side of it, it'll just like you know if you just play it on it, it on it, you can just play it on curve. You know, shock the shock their guy on two, play Bone Crusher Giant on three. It just feels great. I'm sure it's just gonna you know there's other. It's it's not hard to think. I guess not. This, I don't want to say it's less decision making, but the adventure cards that you can just play on curve and they're just going to be good. I think are just going to be great. <laughs> you know, I guess eventually big fan. There might be some that the the spell side is is a lot more expensive than the creature side. So you can like, well, well, do I do I you know wait and maybe get the spell part of it, uh, or do I just play the creature now? And bone crusher giants again, the ones with this where the spells are cheaper. Again, you just play them on a curve. It's literally two spells from one, maybe even three if you get a you know get the killer creature off the shock. So, Bone Crusher Giant. I think just the Bone Crusher Giant side of it is pretty boring, but adding this uh, shock to it, the adventure mechanic to it, I think it makes it really interesting for Red. <laughs> the giant ability only deals damage to the controller, so yeah, you can't like pump it and kill some other guy. Yeah, you can't like yeah. So whoever targets it takes the damage. Anyway, um, another another pretty good one, uh, Brazen. Yeah, brazen, 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 brazen borrower. One blue, blue for a three-one fairy rogue. Flash flying can only block creatures with flying, and then petty theft. One in a blue instant. Uh, return target non-land permanent to its owner. Uh, an opponent controls to its owner's hand. Again, didn't read the spell name before. <laughs> yeah, again. Uh, also, you can play on a curve if necessary. Not so, not not that really required in blue, but it gives you this unsummon. Actually, better than unsummon gives you this into the royal, into the royal without kick. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Disperse? It, 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 I think it's Disperse. It might be Disperse. Okay, it gives you a Disperse that you can later cash in a 3-mana 3-1 flyer. So this one, uh, because it's blue, again, you can deploy it as a flying blocker if you need to, or you can Can't most... Block creatures with flying. Yeah, no, flying blocker. Only flying blocks block. flying. Okay, I just made sure. But uh, th- this card's obviously good. The, the both sides of it are great. I would imagine this is the one that you're always going to you know, get the bounce into the creature. Uh Blue sometimes needs, needs these like, kind of random flying idiots to be able to close the game out, and this oh, card kind of does everything. Flying, this is like turbo efficient. It's, it's very, it very everything efficient. you want. It's mythic. It doesn't feel mythic, but it's it's got so much text on it. And it does. It does have, to be fair, blue. all these adventure spells might have a lot of text it's, on them, but yeah, yeah. Brazen Boar, that card's great. I, I imagine that card's going to win most keeps. Uh, the next one we get to is Emberth Shieldbreaker. Emberth? Emberth Shieldbreaker. One in red for a 2-1 Human Knight. No other abilities. <laughs> And then uh, battle display. That's a new one. Yeah, one red sorcery, destroy target artifact. So obviously, this is a the Matic Vandals variant of the set. Yeah. Uh, I think if you're just still playing Matic Vandals, I think this card is a better Matic Vandals. Well, I thought that's what Goblin Crater Maker was. I think Goblin Crater Maker is the is the better better of both worlds. I guess if there's enough targets where Matic Vandals is playable in your cube, then this card's probably better. Yeah. Where. Uh, this is more like the artifact Goblin heavy Crater, 
Crater Maker? Power. Uh, yeah. Crater Maker. Yeah. Crater Maker is just like a good vanilla bear that can shock blockers out of the way or yeah. every now and then kills a batter skull. Or <laughs> wood. Yeah, or wood. Who knows? So, again, I think uh, if you're the camp where um, Keldon Vandals, Keldon Marauders, both those cards with short artifacts, it's fine. It's playable. Uh, Ember of Shieldbreaker seems like the uh, obvious switch. Yeah, you, if you, you're playing this heavy. because you expect your opponent to have artifacts at yeah. all times, so you don't just play a Goblin Fighter. Yeah, but you can play Goblin Fighter if you absolutely need to. Yeah. You, need, you need sometimes you need a two drop. Speaking of two drops, the next one we got is Hypnotic Sprite, blue blue two one flyer. I mean, it's a fairy. Uh, Mesmeric Glare. I'm yeah, to be fair. This is the first time I'm also reading a lot of these these adventure names, so they're they're all they're random to me too. So Mesmeric Glare, two and blue instant. Counter target spell with Fernima cost three or less. Again, both sides of this card aren't super interesting, but but together, uh, I'm super in. Um, so again, a three mana for a, a hard hard counter spell, but it costs two and a blue, which is really nice. Not not one in blue, not one blue blue. And then the the creature on this one is definitely just like a a bonus. It's kind of this counter spell that gives you this two one you can cash in later. It's like your fairy conclave type. Thing. Yeah, it, yeah. It, this one this one that kind of uh, blocks uh, blocks ground guys. We need it to. Uh, a fairly efficient uncommon. I'm not sure if it'll stick around for long, but I definitely think it's uh, worth trying out. Yeah. Interesting enough card. I'm going to give it a shot. Me if too. It, if it costs one blue blue to counter, I... No, no, no. Yeah, the two and a blue is real nice. Uh, this one, this one, a little, little more, maybe a little more out there. We got Love Struck Beast. Love Struck Beast is uh, two and a green for a 5-5 five, five Beast Noble. Noble? Ooh. Yeah, no, Love Struck Beast can't attack unless you control a 1-1 one, one creature. And then uh, Heart's Desire, one green sorcery, one. create a one-one white human creature token. Obviously, feeding itself, uh, creating uh, Love Struck Beast is creating the thing it, it was in love with. It's maybe a little weird. I don't know if that works in the story of the mana my, my mind story. Right? Mana elves are one ones. That's yeah, great. So squirrels. You play this very easy to play on uh, play on two. Most squirrels, uh, big I guess, body. Yeah, yeah. yeah big yeah. body. Three mana, five five. But at the cost of, if you if you run on a 1 1s, Love Struck Beast doesn't do a lot. Uh, it can block still. That's very important, um, thankfully. I think I'm more of a champion of this card, so I don't think this is a green card. I think it's more of a red or a white card. You play it in your gruel deck. And they happen to make lots of tokens in those other colors that happen to be 1 1s. Be elementals or goblins or soldiers or. Yeah. Hey, if you can get the, if you can get the guy to stick around, the, a three minute five five is no joke. It's a it's a real fast clock, pretty quick. Um, they're gonna have to worry about it or worry about having to deal with all your other one ones. Uh, but again, the this card again, you just play it on turn one and you play it on turn three. Uh, it kind of because curve it curves into itself naturally, supports itself. Another one that I'm sure this is worth trying. Again, it's just a three minute five five is hard to it's hard to argue. It's hard to argue those stats. Big body. So, uh, even like the four mana five five and a one one you get as a top deck later on isn't isn't that bad. So again, because it can still block without without the one one, uh, I'm much more in for this card than I was originally because I did not think it could block. But you know, here we are. So the next one doesn't need much of an introduction. It is uh, I'm sure the most talked about adventure spell, adventure card in the whole set, and that is murderous uh, rider, one black black zombie knight, two three lifelink. Uh, when it dies. Put on the bottom of its owner's library. For some reason. Drew was only finding that out right now. Just an extra line of text. Who knew? Uh, and then uh, Swift End. One black black instant. Destroy target creature. Planeswalker. You lose two life. I did read that one in Adventure Name before. Because it was like the first one that was like, Ooh. I still didn't know Swift End. <laughs> so, uh, unlike the other ones, I think everyone, everyone, everyone we've talked about so far, this one does not curve into itself. You know what I mean? Like, you can't play the Swift End into Murderous Raider. So you have to kind of pick and choose. Do I play the life? Do I play the creature? Or do I play the instant? And the best part about these cards is you can choose. You get to play whichever one is better for the situation, which is awesome. <laughs> almost always the instant. Yeah, yeah almost always. So the, the most of these are in the conversation because the spell side of them is, is good enough. Like well, just, just those effects alone. You can run it out enough. there and then Grenzo it back when it dies. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's obviously just a uh, hero's downfall. At the cost of two life, but you get this two three life link attached to it. There's a lot to like. Uh, there's a lot of black mana symbols, but still, uh, it's just gonna play well. Black needs a three drops. Everything's great about this card. It's gonna be, I'm sure, the most the one that'll last the longest and talked about the most. I'm sure for uh, uh, the rest to come. come. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It also is really you know what, all of these cards. I must say, like the adventure border, uh, showcase border, whatever you want to call it, are all fantastic. 
Do they come foil and non foil? Yeah, I believe so. Oh, this is gonna be a nightmare. But they're all yeah. fantastic. Like all their artwork is the border's super nice. It's true. All the like the the, the whatever kind of art style, fantastic. Everything's great. Big oh, fan. I like the black and like murderous writers, like black Murderous Writers really nice. most of them, there's almost every single one of them. I'm like a big fan of a huge fan. There's a lot of, almost like all the little blue fairy creatures. There's one that like animates an artifact. I love that one. Big fan. So this one, uh Order of Midnight, this one's a little boring. Order of Midnight is one in a black for a two two human knight. Flying, and cannot block. But Alter Fate, one in a black, sorcery, return to our creature card from a graveyard to your hand. Pretty medium. I yes, like it. So, I like it. So this one is just, uh, you know, like, like we mentioned previously, play them on curve. Uh, Order of Midnight is, I would imagine, as a, a rule filler on two. If you have it on two, you're going to play it on two. Yep. But it's a two drop, but if you draw late, it also it have multi, you know, multi friends. Right, it's a, it's a four, it's a, it, then it becomes a flying grave digger. Right at, at that rate, so uh, this uh, two mana two two flying in black. You know the vampire interloper effects weren't uh, play were, were playable not too long ago, and this one does it better with evasion, uh, or still with evasion, uh, but again has this uh, grave digger side of it that if you draw it like it and an optional nice border and an optional nice border. So again, yeah, it's, it's a two drop that is good on two. It's good on ten. It's hard to argue. Uh, extremely boring. And I don't, uh, you know... If I'm, if I'm playing this in a deck and we're hit, we hit 10, we're, we're, pro- we're probably having Well, if you turn Graveside, it's fine. But, um... <laughs> yeah, not, again, not uh, anything to write home about, but uh, I'm sure very serviceable. But hard to hard to be unhappy, I'm sure, most of the time. And that brings us to our our la- last uh, adventure card. I've never read this card. I didn't read that. Sorry, I've never read its name. I only know what it does. And that's Rimrock Knight. One in a red for a 3-1 Dwarf Knight. Rimrock Knight can't block. But it's, you know, he doesn't block well anyway, so it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter in red. Uh, but it has Boulder Rush. That's One red card. instant. Target okay. creature gets plus 2, plus 0 until end turn. So hopefully, he gets to, sne- you get to like, shock your point. You get to shock. You, know, you get to attach a shock to one of your creatures to get through. And then you play 2 and a 3-1. Again, this one doesn't uh, play on curve either. This but... one does if you target the opponent's creature. <laughs> that is correct. Um... Uh, three power, two, uh, three power, two drop. Um, it, it's it, it, it has a combat trick. Combat trick's not super playable in cube, but this is a combat trick that's attached to a. It's more like two free damage. Kind like of playable creature, trick. yeah, but it might be a combat trick. It doesn't. Play I always think about. I always. Yeah, it's fine. Your, your red creatures don't survive combat anyway. Most time, it will off. die. You want to trade up? <laughs> you know, you will, the love struck beast. Boom, dead. <laughs> My three power guy blocking red might have a problem with that card. Love struck beast is gonna block red decks real well. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, again, this guy, very boring. Um, I'm less in. Drew's in. But I, I'm more... I, I I always like the idea of maybe playing a combat trick. You know, I've, 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 I've met many times... This has to be the most playable contract. No, no, no. I've many times thought about playing uh, Become Immense, because I really like Become Immense. I also so, ran Become Immense for a while. Big, uh, big Become Immense fan. But, uh... Yeah, we're rocking it. Drew's real excited. Anyway... So that's that wraps up all the adventure cards. I want to say we didn't talk about very many, but I feel like we also talked about a bunch. I'm sure there are some that we're maybe uh, we missed a uh, missed a couple of. Is there like wrath? Yeah. So a realm cloak giant is maybe in an honorable mention. I'm talking about it. I guess we can just talk about it now. So it's five mana sorcery, destroy all non giants, and then a seven mana. It's five white white seven seven vigilance giant. I think it's hard that to is it. Yeah. So it's a wrath of god for five. And then, well, kind of rather go. Doesn't destroy your chameleon clauses. <laughs> or great titans. Or titans, actually. This is, that is a serious problem. Or that new boulder giant guy. Ooh. It doesn't destroy titans, which is kind of an issue. But anyway, five mana wrath that comes that comes with this finisher you can play in control decks. So, I've always said as a finisher, it doesn't really matter once you control. The it game. almost doesn't matter if, what if you, you have kill like them a with. Title kraken, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, it almost doesn't matter what you kill them with. So this like. The, the Wrath of God, the, let's say, you know, you play it over Fumigates or your third Wrath Effect or something like, along those lines. But it's an option to play it. I'm not super excited for the 7-7 um, seven, seven attached to it, but it's reason enough to maybe give it a try. I know I'm not trying it out on, I guess, on release day, but I look forward to seeing, you know, what people think about it. But that is a, that is the other one that I'm, I think we were... Only well, the other one that I think I didn't put down. There was that, that, well, the Animating Fairy, if you're in an Artifact Heavy Cube. I'm not sure what the text does, but the art's really nice. Uh, I think it turns the artifact into a 4-4. Four, four. Artifact. Or art's really nice. So anyway, that is the adventures of Throne of Eldraine. So, uh, 
Let us know what you think. You know, we look forward to. Uh, I, I'm really, really excited about uh, testing out as much as I can from this set. I know I've uh, I've only done one test run with a handful of them. Murderous Raider was surprisingly excellent. Like the card's hard to hard to argue. I may have lost it. Got to play a couple cards that were going to come up in the next episode too that have played pretty well already. So, yeah, again, that's our first half of Normal Drain. Again, thanks again to the Metabase, uh, your home base for all things match together. And uh, make sure to stay tuned for part two of our Thornville Drain review. Ciao.